everyone. Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell. And today on our show, our guest is Lisa McCormick, which we're really happy about having her here today. A musician and performer, Lisa's early career centered on recording and touring the folk music circuit, along with other musicians, musicians including Jonathan Edwards. She expanded her career to include teaching, which she does in person, online, and in workshops, like her Connecticut River Boat Cruise, retreats in, at Hallelujah Farm, and on the Caribbean island of Vieques. Doesn't sound bad, huh? <laughs> She's brought hundreds, if not thousands, of people to a deeper and more fun appreciation of the power of music, especially through playing the mighty ukulele. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Wendy. It's great to have you on the show. It's awesome to be here. Oh, good, good. You know, um, the ukulele is sort of the secret weapon in this it show. Is, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait to get there, but we will. Um, <laughs> So you were brought up in Albany, New York. That's right. Yes. Yes. Um, in the Burbs. Uh-huh. And um, but I always had a big crush on Vermont. Nice. And my mother grew up in Bennington, so oh, we oh. would we would come over to Bennington sometime, and I was just like, I, I have to live in Vermont. That's just how it has to be. Isn't so. there something about crossing that border? Yeah. It's so real. It, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel it too. Yes. Um, and. What kind of family did you have? Do you have siblings? I have one sister, uh, eight years younger than mine, uh, me, and mm -hmm. um, my parents are alive and well and wow. still living in the Albany area. Was music part of your life early on? It was. Um, in fact, I have a, <laughs> I have a picture of myself. Um, I must be about six years old max, studying the liner notes of the Beatles Hard Day's Night mm -hmm. <laughs> album. So my father was very into the Beatles oh, and nice. um, and you know the contemporary music of the of the early 60s yeah. and um, so I just thought that was you know part of life. The Beatles were part of life, uh, you know. Were you playing music? Were you I, instruments? No, I picked up the guitar when I was around 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, my dad had one in the house, and he showed me a couple of chords, and, um, you know, I just loved it. It was not easy. It was way too big for me. Right, right. <laughs> and um, just kind of did a lot of self-teaching, um, exploring, you know, how to play Beatles songs mm -hmm. and James Taylor songs and right. stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. So you didn't have any lessons or anything? I had some lessons mm -hmm. as as a as a adolescent, um, some in just basic folk guitar and some in a little bit of classical. Yes. But mostly I'm self-taught. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you can continue to self-teach yourself. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, every musician does. Yes, right, right. <laughs> it never stops. So your crush on Vermont was requited by going to Marlboro College. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And what did you study? I studied um, sociology and anthropology. Oh, wow. Yeah. And eventually education. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to get a degree. This was the something to fall back on because you're not supposed to try to be a musician for your yeah, for right. a living, right? So I wanted to get a degree in teaching. So I transferred yeah. over to Keene State uh -huh. and got that degree and yeah. got a lot of special training in teaching adult beginners oh. with uh, learning disabilities. Oh, so, and, and teaching in general, not music particularly. Right, just uh, at, uh -huh. yeah, just teaching. Yes. Yeah. And you followed through with that. Oh yeah. Um, yes. So that um, that was and that was early. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, were you, when you did a whole touring circuit as as a young mm -hmm. as a young woman as singer songwriter, mm -hmm. um, what was life like during that time? Um, it was a lot of time in my Subaru. <laughs> um, what you have to do at that level of developing an audience as a new artist. Yeah is you have to go play in every single town, yeah, right. in every single coffee house, in every single festival, in anything you can do, you have to try to pursue and do yeah. in order to build an audience. Yeah. And so it's exciting and relentless and yeah. Um, yeah. And were you mostly alone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really going from place to place. Yeah. 
And somehow you connected with Jonathan Edwards, yeah. who was a bit of a champion for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's somebody I also tried to learn to play his songs when I got a little older. Mm -hmm. He discovered me in this in the most classic way. Um, I was playing at the Folkway in Peterborough. Yes. Um, and it was a Tuesday night uh, round robin thing with some, you know, singer songwriters that nobody knew yet. And um, you know, maybe seven or eight people in the audience, but the way the lighting is, you can't see who they are. Yeah, luckily. And every time I would get up and do a song, there was some guy in the back who would be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> and after the performance was done, he came up and introduced himself and he said, I just love your work. And can you give me a cassette? Yes. <laughs> and I gave him a cassette. Yeah. And a couple of weeks later, he called me at home and he said, I want to work with you. Wow. I want to help you produce your first record. I want to take you on tour with me. Um, and thus began a great adventure. What kismet. Yeah. You're in your 20s? Yeah. Yeah. How long did you do that? Um, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. quite I'll remember. A lot of miles. A lot of miles right. and a lot of years. Yeah. yeah. Was it mostly Northeast? Uh, mostly, yeah. 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 A mostly. lot of great venues yeah. back then. From, there. you know, from Maine to Virginia. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my, and then oh. as far west as, say, Ohio. Wow. Exhausting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and exciting. I mean, that's the life I wanted to be living, and I knew that in order to develop into mm. an artist that people have heard of, you got to put in that kind of yeah. time. Was making albums something that you were headed for during that time or focused on? Well, I was most shocked when Jonathan said, I want to produce your first CD. Um, and we had gotten to CDs by then. Exactly, <laughs> and that was kind of a new idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so at, by that point, I was like, yeah, you know, this is, this is huge. This is huge. Yes. Um, and this was way before people could do it in their homes, on mm. their computers. Mm. You know, this Good was point. big studios, um, you know, the big, 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 big setups. Yes. And that was really the only option for making a CD. And the only option for a developing artist like myself would be to have a an angel like him. Yes, yeah. And were you recording, <clears throat> where were you recording? In uh, Rhinebeck, New York. Oh, not too far. Yeah. In 97, I don't know if we're, we might be making a little bit of a leap here, but um, you had an album called Right Now, mm -hmm. which was nominated, a preliminary no nomination for Grammy. That's right. Yes, yes. that's pretty exciting. Yes. <laughs> and that was my debut album. Uh -huh. That's the album that Jonathan, the first album oh, he was. produced with me, yes. And it did. It got preliminary nominations for um, Song of the Year, mm -hmm. Best New Artist, um, Album of the Year. Oh. Yeah. That's very exciting. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. In terms of performance, Lisa, um, you played a lot of different venues mm -hmm. over the course of time and during, especially during that time. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship to the audience, um, being on stage, what that's like? Yeah, um, I'm an incredible introvert. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but, I, but my passion and my calling was yeah. I need to be a professional musician that's that's really non-negotiable oh. uh, just in my in my gut in my bloodstream right um, in terms of how to relate to the audience and how to relate to being on stage I learned so much from observing Jonathan who is an oh. absolute master entertainer oh. and so he never really took me aside and said, do this, do that, look at people, smile, you know. Yeah. But I, I watched how he would pull a whole room right into his, into his uh, lap yeah. and create a very intimate, uh, fun experience yeah. for everybody. And I learned so much just like, it was like an apprenticeship. Right. And yes. so I said, well, I have to get up there and do that too. Yeah. And so you had to work innerly, yeah. right, to do that? Yeah. 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 And that came with time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had gotten a BA in teaching 
and this is a quote of yours that I found, and you said, I found this, no I found this knowledge and didn't want to keep it to myself, which I thought was a really great quote, huh. and as an impetus <clears throat> mm -hmm. for teaching yeah. and, and working with other people. Yeah. And that was kind of the beginning of a different part of your career. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So after um, after getting that degree, I, my first job was with Landmark College, oh. and actually my first first job was with their boarding school in on the uh, coast near Boston. Yeah. And then their very first year of of college in Putney. And we went through, they put us through an intensive, like, four-week training um, all day on how the young adult mind learns. Ooh. And especially people with, you know, very, with um, dyslexia. Mm -hmm. um, but that was super pivotal in what I use in my teaching now ah. is the ability that I learned to intuit mm. what is making sense to this person, yeah. what is not making sense to this person, mm -hmm. how can we work with that, mm. and how can I as teacher yeah. say, okay, I understand that, you know, where to, where you're, where you're, the portals of your learning are strongest, ah. you know, and, and where they, are not and where they're frustrating you so let's stay away from those uh -huh. you know and build on the things that are working yeah and uh so yeah that's field experience yeah right that's yeah. very cool yeah and you you've taken you obviously you took that in and it became part of your mode yeah, of teaching exactly and you've done quite a bit of teaching yes um and at some point along the way um you worked with suzanne kingsbury oh yes yes and you became a gateless master teacher yes <laughs> Yes, that was awesome. Um, she uh, is the founder of a, basically started as a writing um, philosophy yeah. for writing in groups and writing on your own. Um, but then she offered this uh, teacher training, which was an extensive 45 hour something long thing and um, went and stayed in this house for several days and just total immersion. Mm -hmm. And part of my interest was not just teaching, but learning to lead retreats, ah. um, like taking it, taking the teaching to beyond the classroom. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and and how do you how do you do all that? Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds very similar to what you're saying about Jonathan Edwards is embracing sort of whatever group you're in yeah. and bringing everyone into it. Y exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And, and the landmark piece of really being able to listen to people and yeah. figure out where they're coming yeah. from. It's and, quite extraordinary. And so Suzanne is a, is a master at doing that, yeah. at create, you know, bringing everybody in. Yeah. And I that's what I do now in my music classes is yeah. You know, just bring everybody into this warm, mm. accepting, fun yeah. environment um, where hopefully people just relax and have a great time and yeah. enjoy one another, even if they don't mm -hmm. know one another. Mm -hmm. You and your partner, Julian McCrown, who is also incredibly creative yes. and known in the community. Um, yes. Many people have. Um, have seen Julian, again, someone who doesn't make a big splash, uh, <laughs> but who is always there and is a really grounding force. Um, so the two of you um, decided that you're freelance musicians, mm -hmm. right? 401ks, things like that, you know, it's a little tricky. Um, <laughs> and so you got really creative. Yeah. Yeah. Even more creative. Yes. <laughs> in, a, in a different realm. Yeah. 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 It, had, it had mostly to do with the fact that we um, fell in love with the island of Vieques, ah. and um, we had, you know, we own a home in Brattleboro, or the bank owns our home in Brattleboro, yeah. and yeah. and the winters are just like, oh my God, they're so long, <laughs> and dark and um, icy, and, and so we had visited this island, uh, Vieques, off the coast of Puerto Rico, for a week, and the minute we landed there, it was like, this is it. We don't need to find any place else. This is so cool. It's funky. It's friendly. It's laid back. It's largely wa national wildlife preserve, mm. so the beaches are mm. completely undeveloped. I mean, it's incredible. 
So we, over the course of the next couple of years, began to set an intention. Um, the one thing I say is it's possible to figure out what you don't, how to do what you don't know how to do, mm -hmm. right? We had no idea how to make this part of our lives, but we decided we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to figure it out. And um, so a lot of that ended up being using the internet one way or another because there's acceptable internet coverage there. Uh -huh. And so we could go down and continue working. Uh -huh. Um, and or start new things down there. In paradise. In paradise, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you've done an amazing array of things. Yes. You had to learn a lot. Oh, right? yeah. We, big learning curve. He and I, we, we said, this is what we need to do, and we launched into like a two-year study program together. Oh, wow. Read a yeah. million books yeah. on internet marketing yeah. and, you know, all kinds of stuff and just started making things happen. Yeah, and a lot of things that you made happen. Well, you were really creating a new model mm -hmm. it, it, for yourself that yeah. really retrofitted to you. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it, ended, it started out with guitar tricks mm -hmm. online, yes. right? Yes. Um, and it, it, this also included other instructors, but you were one of the most popular instructors yes. on that. Um, and an audio learning program as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you did, you've done like over 350 videos. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. And so it's very often it's starting with someone who knows absolutely nothing, uh -huh. right? And going from there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Yep. Well, that was part of the learning curve. It's yeah. like I have to have things that I can offer mm -hmm. to the world that are not just me in my studio and, an, and a student in a chair. Yeah. You know, I have to have other things to offer, so I have to figure out how to create them. Yes. And they may be an instructional video. They may be a listening program. Mm -hmm. um, so just figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> and you did. You're offering so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I should mention um, to folks, uh, check out Lisa's website. That information will be at the end of the show. But it, you do get a real sense of how how deep in you go <laughs> and, and what the selections are and mm -hmm. what kinds of things people can learn. Um, you've said that um, music is art made of sound. Yes. Which is quite lovely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, I, I think that um, there's so many things at your core that you're bringing forward through music and sound. Um, and part of that, um, which I'm definitely going to let you talk about, part of that is... Um, that music is, you're creating community. Yes. With music and through music. Yes. And bringing people together. Yes. And yeah, why don't you take it from there? The spirit <laughs> of goodwill. Okay. Creating community through music. So it is my belief that music is part of, an essential part of human evolution. Um, that we are born with the desire to make more people. We're born with the desire to eat uh, food and drink water and create shelter, but without an, one more element that brings that group of people together in a sense of in the spirit of goodwill mm. and cooperation, and that element is music. And there has never been a human culture on, in history that did not have music. Yeah. Um, the first instrument I'm aware of is a 30,000-year-old flute made from a hollow bone that someone had drilled little holes in and learned oh. to blow and make music. Yeah. Prior to that, anything percussive. Sure. But what it does, I mean, it's, it's magnetic. You know, if you hear music, you're like, where is that? Especially live music. Mm -hmm. Where is that coming from? I want to go see it. I want to go be part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during those times that the people come together, there's a sense of goodwill, a sense of we're all on the same page, we're all experiencing a similar emotion. Yeah. Um, and isn't this great? And yeah. does, it doesn't matter who everybody is, yeah. you know? We belong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a force of nature. You wrote something really beautiful, and I'd love to have you read it. Sure. If you, could, if you wouldn't mind, because I think it... Um, it really describes beautifully um, what we've been talking about. Sure. Just um, change of glasses. 
<laughs> oh yeah, good for you. You got you brought two pairs. There we go. Um, yeah. So this is this is most of a piece that I wrote um, and posted on Facebook recently, and it did get a lot of very positive response. Um, so I'll read what I have here. It's called "Go to Your Instrument." When you are feeling overwhelmed by the sheer mountain ranges of details that somehow have become your responsibility every day and every next day and every day after that, go to your instrument, go to your music. When you hear a song that makes you cry and the flash flood of broken damn emotion washes your feet out from under you, go to your instrument, go to your music. When you fear the phone call coming in with the results of your tests, when you find a thing you were not meant to find, a telling crumb of betrayal of trust left behind by someone you thought loved you in ways you felt certain of, go to your instrument, go to your music. This may sound like I'm suggesting you pull away, isolate yourself, hide in the closet, turn your face away from reality, just the opposite. I'm suggesting that you notice the coexistence of another compelling reality, one that is already and always true at every moment. Music is there to catch you. I know, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And, um, you know, again, I, th I think of you um, falling in love with Vermont, you know, falling in love with um, the Beatles, falling in love <laughs> yeah. with, you know, um, Viecas. Yeah. Uh, so much of what you're doing is really um, around that, around mm -hmm. um, uh, bringing people together with music as the expression. And yeah. um, that brings us to ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's talk a little bit about ukuleles. Okay, ukuleles. Well, unfortunately, ukuleles prior to recent years mm -hmm. had a pretty goofy uh, reputation. Um, they were popular um, and not considered goofy in the like the Tin Pan Alley days. Mm -hmm. But then years went by and along came Tiny Tim and oh, yeah. um, you know it all sort of became a joke like this funny little instrument mm -hmm. and um, and you know, people would dress up in silly clownish outfits, yeah. and you know, it was not taken seriously. And it's a beautiful musical instrument. It's a four-stringed instrument, similar to a guitar, a lute. You know, mm -hmm. it, um, its origins are um, Portuguese. Hmm. Um, a oh, I forget the name of the original instrument from Portugal, but when the Portuguese <laughs> found their way to Hawaii. They brought these uh -huh. instruments with them. The Hawaiian population loved them, and they have beautiful tone woods available growing mm. on the island. And they, so then it became more associated with Hawaii. Yes. Um, but it is a legitimately beautiful stringed instrument, yeah. and it is very easy to get started. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Anybody with doubts, you know, so many people, oh, I don't have a musical bone in my body. Oh, I can't read music. Oh, I can't carry a tune. Mm -hmm. um, I teach a, a workshop called Ukulele in a Day. And it could be 20 students who've never touched the ukulele before. I teach them one chord, and within six minutes into the class, we're playing and singing a song. <laughs> and people are like, I can do this. <laughs> That's so great. I can make music. Yeah. Because people in our culture, people tend to hold music at a yes. you know at a distance. Mm -hmm. It's only for the professionals, mm -hmm. for the people mm -hmm. who really study. You know, and I'm not musical, but um, I bust all that right out of the That's, room. You've been doing it with, for a while now. Yeah. And you you do tend to get a group of people together and go on a retreat or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but again, that's creating another community. Exactly. Yeah, Lisa. Going back to um, to when you were talking about music, um, and music is here to catch you, and yeah. the importance of music um, and the power of music, uh, and what you read, you know, your writing is really beautiful, as well as your voice Thank and you. your playing. Thank you. Yeah, and. Um, those are just facts. <laughs> you know, it's really true. Thank you, you. You, yeah, your voice, you know, I've heard it over the years. 
and it's really lovely and captivating and I think that a lot that's a lot of what you're creating is you're captivating people in such a pure and gentle kind of way mm -hmm. and music is you know music is it's, the center it's of there that. to catch them yes right right right, right. Um, so with writing you did some songwriting oh yeah yes um, but the piece that you read was beautiful writing as well. So are you, is that something that you're thinking about doing? Yes. I've been working on a book. Uh -huh. um, it's still in, you know, massive quantities of stuff that I have to figure yeah. out exactly how to organize. Yeah. But it is about a lot of what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, sort of some myth busting around, oh, I, I'm not qualified to play music, yeah. and um, th the stuff we talked about, it, about it being essential to human existence. Mm -hmm. And also um, a very step-by-step -step method for self-coaching hmm. so that people who are learning to play, who don't have a teacher, per yeah. se, they're probably all over YouTube and you know trying mm -hmm. a little of this and trying mm -hmm. a little of that but they don't have a method, a step-by-step, yeah. step. do this, and then do this, and then do this. Yes. And so it's, it's um, that method is called Note to Self. Uh-huh, that's good, <laughs> very good. Mindful method for music and life. Uh-huh. And that's the book I'm working on. That's great, so you're, you're helping people to um, learn by themselves. Yes, <laughs> yes. And how the note, you know, note music to self, how it enriches the self. Yes. Um, and there's an opposite side of that, which is that part of the methodology actually requires that you write things down, uh -huh. that you make a note to yourself uh -huh. on your music when you discover a, a, a tweak that helps with the tone or something uh -huh. like that. It helps with the learning process mm -hmm. because you're doing it you're make, turning it into language, you're yeah. turning it into something you can read, right. you're turning it into something you can come back to next time you pick up that thing and say, oh yeah, I remember now. That's right. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's so right. super important. I've done it my whole career. Uh, my pages are covered with notes. <laughs> oh, it's so interesting because I think that that is a piece of a learning process yeah. of writing things down. Yeah, it makes it real. Yeah. Yeah. It makes and it, it also real. brings it in from, you know, your mind yeah. out into... And you know. in your own language. Yes. Not my teacher said to do this, right. but I figured out yeah. that I should do this. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, to use, uh, to use an expression um, that is very well used, it's very self-empowering. Yes. Yeah. Right? You're, yeah. you're, you're showing people how they can empower themselves through the power of music, yes. basically. Yeah. It's very exciting. That feels like, that's my calling. Yeah. That yeah. is my calling. It feels, yes, it feels like that is very solid in you. <laughs> yeah. Many years ago, I was studying um, Spanish in an immersion program in Guatemala. Uh -huh. um, and I visited a Mayan priestess who was like a ninth generation Mayan priestess who did astrology by the Mayan calendar. And she did my chart for me, had all sorts of things to say, but she said, when it comes right down to it, your purpose in this life, Lisa, is to help other people see the light within themselves. And I got the chills. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. And it just feels so right. Yes, yeah. and that's what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thank goodness you're here. <laughs> thank and thank, you. Thank you for being in Brattleboro and doing all this. We're uh, very, again, Brattleboro is so lucky to have um, to have someone like you doing the things that you're doing. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. A lot of wonderful people a doing lot of wonderful, wonderful things. People. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we will keep an eye out. Okay. You know, Good. for whatever's next. The the book that you're writing sounds fascinating. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It was a delight. It was. Thanks to all of you for joining us today and hearing about what Lisa has done and is doing and is going to continue to do, which is bring people together through the power of music and a lot of love and caring. See you next time.